fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. The people of Possum Bend were becoming increasingly fearful as big blustering Rocky Miles gained power and influence. Two lawmen who had opposed Miles and his henchmen had died quite suddenly and unexpectedly. There was evidence to point to murder but nothing could be proved. Sheriff Bates was investigating these deaths when he too was killed. There was no doubt about the fact that Sheriff Bates had been murdered. The bullet that killed him had entered his back. Three days after the funeral of Sheriff Bates, Rocky Miles and two of his pals entered the office of the stagecoach line. Morning, Miles. Uh, howdy. Uh, what can I do for you? Nothing. I'm here to talk to the widow of Sheriff Bates. To me? Yeah. You can save your breath, Mr. Miles. There's nothing I care to discuss with oh, you. Now, Mrs. Bates, that's no way to be. I'm only trying to be friendly. Are you always friendly with the families of the people you murder? Now, you hold on, Mrs. Bates. Shut that's... up, Jake. Mrs. Bates, you talk like you suspected me of having something to do with your husband's death. I'm not saying anything right now. There'll be law in Possum Bend, and when it comes, you and your kind had better be ready to clear out. Well, there goes the stagecoach. What of it? Oh, nothing, nothing. I... Shut I'm up. Good. Mrs. Bates, to uh, get back to what I was about to say. Please stand aside, Mr. Miles. I want to leave. Sure, sure thing. Leave in just a second. But you were speaking of law coming here to Possum Bend, and that's right in line with what I was thinking. We do need law here. We need a lawman who'll clean out a lot of these newcomers that go around packing guns and stirring up trouble. There'll be that kind of law here in plenty soon. Well, that kind of law is here right now, Mrs. Bates. Namely me. You? Why, you're I'm not... I'm going to get myself elected sheriff at the next election. How about that, boys? That's right. That's boy. a ticket, Rocky. You'll make a first-class sheriff. So that's why you murdered my husband? I miss Now I see it. It's as clear as day. You figure when you get elected sheriff in Possum Bend, you can run things the way you want. Well, between now and election, it's up to the mayor to appoint a sheriff. That's right, ma'am. If you'll turn over the badge your husband wore, I'll take it to the mayor and ask him to swear me in. The mayor won't do it. I've already talked to him, and he's promised to appoint another man. Oh, he has, huh? Well, maybe I can change his mind. Where's the badge? You can't change his mind. 
And as for the badge, I've sent it away on the stagecoach with a letter to the man who's going to be our new sheriff. Uh, who is he? He was a friend of my husband's. A man who's one of the rip snortinest lawmen the West has ever seen. Maybe you've heard of Bart Cordray. Cordray? Oh, hey, Dave, do you know Bart Cordray? Jim knew him. And I wrote to him and told him how Jim had died and how Rocky Miles and his pals were trying to take over Possum Bend and how the mayor had promised to make him sheriff if he'd come here. That was a downright foolish move, Mrs. Bates. You shouldn't have done that. Well, it's done. And as soon as Bart gets that message, he'll be here. He'll come on the run. You wait and see. Maybe he'll get a hotter reception than he wants. Quiet. Come on, boys. We have things to do. Right, boss. Rocky, I don't like the way things are stacking up. What's the matter with you, Jake? Hard court Ray. That critter's got a reputation for dealing rough with gents that... Well, gents like us. Rocky, if Cordray comes here, he'll know about the killing of three lawmen. If he can get proof... three of us and a half a dozen of our pals will decorate hangman's ropes. Bart Cordray isn't coming here, boys. And what's to stop him? We are. How? You heard what the widow said? Yeah, she said a lot of things. The message for Cordray is on the stagecoach and it left here just a couple of minutes ago. What's on your mind, boss? We can overtake that stagecoach without any trouble. Uh, get that letter to Cordray. The letter and the badge. All right, scatter, boys. Get your horses and meet me here in five minutes. We'll go get that stagecoach and save Cordray a trip to Possum Bend. And then what, boss? You wait and see. The Lone Ranger and Toto had stopped to water their horses at a spring near the stagecoach trail at the base of a towering cliff. Presently, Toto placed one ear against the ground. What is it, Toto? Hoofbeats. Come this way. That might mean almost anything. Horses, cattle, buffalo. Oh, uh, many hoofbeats? No, no, not many. Maybe also wagon come this way. Possibly the stagecoach. If not far, maybe just round bend and trail. Well, the horses seem to have had all the water they want. We'll go on to Possum Bend and check on some of the stories we've heard of. That gunfire. Yes, I hear it. It's over that way, on stage trail. Around the bend, steady there, Sue. Hey, easy. We go there. Follow me. Come on, come. The masked man led the way along the stage trail. Beyond the bend, he saw the big coach halted. The guard and driver had their hands held high, while several men with guns sat in their saddles watching. Well, hold up, fellow. Maybe we're just in time. Monsilla! Rocky Miles saw the approaching horsemen and shouted a word to his henchmen. The outlaws swung their horses and rode away fast. The Lone Ranger and Toto ranged in their horses at the stagecoach. Who's over there? The man. It's another outlaw. Great day. I'm not an outlaw. Put your hands down. Were either of you hurt? The driver was creased, but it's not serious. Just my shoulder. Who are you? We heard the gun play and thought we might help you. Whoever you are, mister, we're mighty obliged. Those critters would have robbed the mail if you hadn't come along. Do you know who they were? They had bandanas over their faces. But I'd bet my bottom dollar they were Rocky Miles' gang. No doubt of it. So Miles has turned to stage robbery. He's expanding fast. He was after one particular piece of mail. A little package all wrapped up. Did he get it? Nope. <laughs> he could have looked through the mail sacks till doomsday and he wouldn't have found it. I'm delivering that package in person. The sheriff's widow gave it to me. The sheriff's widow? Miss Bates. You mean to say Sheriff Bates is dead? Ain't nothing surprising about that, mister. Possum Bend uses up sheriffs mighty quick since Rocky Miles moved into town. Murdered? Can't be proved. Bates is murdered all right enough. He was shot in the back. But there's no proof that Miles' gang did it. I was heading for Possum Bend to look into the situation there. Dead rat it, mister. That mask and them low-tied guns sure stamped you as an outlaw. But you talk straight. You said Mrs. Bates gave you a package. I'm to take it to Bart Cordray. It's the sheriff's badge. And a letter from the widow asking Bart to come to Possum Bend to clean things up. Guard, I've changed my mind. What? what? Yes, I'm going to relieve you of that package. I'll deliver it to Cordray. Now, hold on. Toss it down. Dad, ratted. you're as bad as those quitters you chased. I hope you'll reverse your opinion later on. Now the badge, if you please. But I... Or shall I drag you down from that seat and take it away from you? You win. Here it is. Thanks. Does your wound need attention, driver? No. Then get going. Get up. Get along there. Get up. Get up there. Get along. Hello, this will change our plan. Not go to Possum Bend? No, not now. We'll cut south and deliver the lawman's badge to Bart Cordray. One, two, three. Oops, come.
After being driven away from the stagecoach, Rocky Miles and the three who were with him rode for ten minutes at top speed. When they were sure they had made good their escape, they drew rein. Oh, 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 oh. All right, boys. Uncover your faces yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Who in tarnation were those riders? How do I know? They were too far away, I couldn't see their faces. Why didn't we stay and shoot it out with them? Because Jake, the guard and driver, would have had a chance to go into action. Mean four men against us. Well, there's four of us. I don't like an even fight. Yeah, there wouldn't have been anything in it for us anyway. Rocky, it looks like you'll have to do without a sheriff's badge. I don't care about having a badge. I want control of Possum Bend. The widow's message will reach Bart Codray. You come hightailing the bend, and that'll be the end of all of us. Well, maybe not. I've been thinking things over, boys. I've got another plan. Yeah? yeah what's that? Bart Cordray is known by reputation. Sheriff Bates is the only one who ever saw him. The widow hadn't seen him? No. No one in town has ever seen Joe Placer. Yeah, who's he? I never heard of Joe Placer. Yeah, who's Joe Placer? A friend of mine. He's just moved into this vicinity. We're going to his camp. <laughs> I've got a job for Placer. Come on, boys. Get him back. Yeah. Bart Cordray had been one of the most feared lawmen in the West. Utterly fearless, his fighting skill had made him almost legendary. And many an outlaw felt great relief when Bart retired and settled on a small ranch. He was seated on the wide porch of the small ranch house when two horsemen appeared in the distance. Bart watched their approach with level, calculating eyes. Presently, he saw that one of the men was masked and the other was an Indian. The Lone Ranger dismounted and stepped to the porch. Hey. Right. No use asking who you are. If you wanted to be known, you'd come unmasked. What's your business? You knew Sheriff Bates of Possum Bend. A good friend. His widow sent this package. Widow? Yeah. How did Bates go out? A bullet in the back. Who got hanged for murder? No one. Why? Lack of evidence. Who should hang? Rocky Miles and a few of his pals. He's operating near Possum Bend. He practically controls the town. I'll open this package. It holds a badge of Sheriff Bates. How did you get it? I took it away from the driver of the stagecoach. He was bringing it to you. You took it from him? Yes. Miles and three of his men made one play to steal it. I thought they might make another. Hmm. Letter from Matilda. Wants me to put on the badge, come and see Bates' killers made to pay. He says the mayor has promised to appoint me sheriff for the unexpired term. Why did Miles try to get this? He doesn't want Bart Cordray to come out of retirement. I see. But you do? Yes. We've never met, have we? No. You know, mister, there's one man I've always wanted to meet. Heard lots about him. He wears a mask. Rides a white horse, too, like that one. I've often thought I'd like to line up alongside that man before I got too old to fight. I think the Lone Ranger and I would make a first-rate fighting combination. With Toto, there'd be three of us. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm going to work. Now, when the three of us reach Possum Bend... Bart, I... uh, Bart, you may not reach the bend. Even though no one knows you by sight, most people know where you live. Miles knows you've got to cross the Snake River Bridge. He'll probably be watching for you. I see. And if you do get to the bend, you can't simply ride in and start gunning. Miles and his gang must be arrested, tried for murder, and found guilty. That calls for evidence. Let's sit down and make some plans. Good. That's why I came here. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. Rocky Miles guided his henchmen to an obscure camp in the valley and introduced them to Joe Placer. From now on, boys, Placer's going to be one of us. Good, Howdy, Placer. Good boy. I got a nice job for you, Joe. How would you like to be sheriff of Possum Bend? Hey, me, a sheriff? Yeah. You got to change your name to Bart Cordray. Now, hold on. They tell me Cordray is settled on a ranch not far from here. Well, it's far enough so no one in Possum Bend knows him on sight. You could take his place and get away with it. How? Oh. Cordray has got a letter and a badge. The letters from the widow of the last sheriff. It'll bring him into Possum Bend. And to get there, he's got to cross Snake River Bridge. We'll meet him there, take the letter and the badge, and then you go on to town in his place. The mayor will swear you in. What do I get out of it? You get plenty. Talk that over right now. Then we'll head for the Snake River Bridge and wait until Cordray comes. <laughs> Four men spent the night near the south end of the bridge that spanned Snake River, but Rocky Miles and the others didn't mind the wait. They knew that sooner or later the celebrated lawman, Bart Cordray, would cross that bridge. It was noon when he appeared. He saw the four men waiting, but advanced boldly as if he hadn't the slightest suspicion of their intentions. All right, come on, boys, let's get him. Pull in that horse. That's a warning. Rain up. Who, who, who there? Get who, your hands who? up. We got you covered. Just keep your hands like that, mister, and slide to the ground. If you gents aim to rob me, you'll find lean pickings. Get to the ground, Cordray. That's what I'm doing. Steady there. Yeah, that's better. I right, take his guns, Jake. All right, keep him covered. You seem to know me. We heard you'd be coming this way. Yeah, here's his guns, Red. Hang on over. Right. Yeah, I'll see if he's got any other weapons. He's got a badge and a letter from the widow. Find those. Yeah. Here's the badge. And here's the letter. All right, give him the placer. All right, I'll take it. Now we drill him, eh, Rocky? No, don't shoot him. Just tie his hands. We'll take him to Joe Placer's camp. You and Red can stay there and keep an eye on him. What's the point in keeping him alive? When Joe Placer tells the widow Bates he's Bart Cordray, the widow may ask a lot of questions to sort of check up. We might need Cordray to get the answers to those questions. All right, get back to the saddle, Cordray. These two boys will take you to the place where you're going. It was late afternoon when Joe Placer, posing as Bart Cordray, rode into Possum Bend and went to the home of the sheriff's widow. Matilda Bates told of her suspicions. I think you're making a big mistake, Mrs. Bates. Mistake? Well, I happen to know Rocky Miles. He's a fine, upstanding gentleman. He's a... what? That's right. That being the case, why does he hobnob with a pack of thieves and killers? <laughs> That's a pretty bold statement, Mrs. Bates. It's true. You can prove it. My husband knew that some of Rocky's men were wanted by the law in other parts of the country. He recognized their pictures on handbills. That's why he was killed. He was going to write letters to other lawyers. Uh, never mind, Mrs. Bates. You just leave things to me. I guess you know Bart Cordray will do the right thing. I... My husband had a lot of confidence in you. Now, just leave everything to me and don't you worry. I'll keep in touch with you. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Cordray. Good day. Thought about Cordray, it'd be different. He will be. Who? <gasps> Masked. Please forgive me, Mrs. Bates. I came to the rear door so I could be here when that man called. But who? Bart I... Cordray is going to do everything you hoped for. The man who just left here is not Cordray. He's not. But but he had the badge. He's one of Rocky Miles' men. He and the others captured Cordray. We saw the whole thing from the cover of the woods. We? My Indian friend and I. If there had been a play made to kill Cordray, we would have stepped in. Uh, Tonto's watching him right now, and the men who are guarding him in camp. I see. Now, please sit down, Mrs. Bates. I want to talk to you. I want to convince you that I'm on your side. Then I want to enlist your aid in putting a pack of crooks where they belong. <laughs> After leaving Matilda Bates with careful instructions, the Lone Ranger hurried back to the Snake River Bridge and picked up a trail that Tonto had left when he followed the captors of Bart Cordray. Darkness overtook the masked man, but Tonto had anticipated this possibility and left signs that could be seen by moonlight. The Indian was waiting among the trees not far from the valley camp. Oh, easy, steady, Philip. 
I can see the campfire, Toto. Uh, me watch from here. Cordre tied plenty tight. Well, then hurt. Uh, How many on guard? Uh, two men. We'll leave the horses here. Come on. Uh. Making no more noise than shadows, the masked man and his Indian companion moved close to the campfire. They could see Cordray stretched on the ground. Jake sat with his back against a fallen tree, while Rhett Dorgan dozed in a blanket. Stay right where you are. Uh, what? Move your hands and you'll give me an excuse to shoot. Miss, say who are you? Who will fix this fellow? I'll take those guns. Hey, let me go. A redskin. Uh, you wake up now, huh? Good work. Are you all right, Bart? Sure thing. We'll untie you as soon as we take care of these guards. Who are you, anyhow? Where'd you come from? You can ask your questions later. This rope should hold you. Hey, hey that hurts my wrist. This is nothing. Wait until you find out what a rope around your neck is going to do. Hey, now, listen, wait. Hold on. Let me talk. You can talk in court. You didn't put a bullet in the back of the sheriff. Maybe you'll tell who did. There. Now, I'll get you free, Cordray. Took you long enough to get here. I've been busy. What's the next move? Do we go ahead as planned? In a few minutes, Mrs. Bates is going to call on Joe Placer. She'll give him some information that will take Placer and Miles to the empty hunter's cabin at the edge of town. They'll be looking for a man who might prove dangerous to them. Meaning? Me. There, your hands are free, Cordray. I'll get to that hunter's shack. You and Tonto follow along as soon as possible. Right. In town, Joe Placer had spent some time in the cafe with Rocky Miles. He left to go to his hotel room, but in a few minutes he was back, and Placer was excited. Now what's the matter with you, Placer? Rocky, the sheriff's wife is playing right into our hands. Remember me telling you their husband had seen hand build some of your boys? Yeah, what about it? Well, when I got to the hotel, this note was waiting for me. It's from Matilda Bates. Hey, it's addressed to Sheriff Cordray. She says I doubted her when she told me about some of your boys being wanted by the law. She says I seemed to doubt that there were hand builds out on them. According to this note, you can get proof of what she told you by calling on a man who's just moved into the old hunter's shack. That's right. It looks like we better get to work. The Lone Ranger was alone in the empty shack when Miles and Placer and three other men reined in their horses. Oh, five of them. Looking through the window, the masked man was somewhat taken aback. It was more than he had figured on. I expected two or three. Come in. Howdy. He's masked. What do you want? Look these gents over, mister. How many of them do you recognize? Why should I recognize any of you? We understand you have handbills on some of us. Where did you get that idea? Where's the handbills? They're not here. Who are you anyway? Why do you wear that mask? Maybe my face decorates a handbill too. Man out, boys. Spread around the room so we can cover this gent from several angles. Uh, We'd better take his guns. Who's going to step close enough to make that play? Uh, see here, mister. There's no need to get tough about this. Oh? We just want to know where you put the handbills and what brings you to this part of the country. Maybe I came to collect a few rewards. I sent word into town that I'd like to talk to the law. I'm wearing the badge. Well, you're in strange company. If it's true that birds of a feather flock together, you're more outlaw than lawman. We were talking about some handbills. We'll let them go for the time being while you tell me where you learned about some wanted men in Possum Bend. And if I don't talk? You'll talk. Close in on him, boys. Take his guns. Don't try it. Take him. I got him. You. Hey. With a sudden violent effort, the Lone Ranger broke free from the man who grabbed him from behind. But two others closed in. There was a sharp exchange of blows before the masked man could reach a corner with all five of his adversaries in front. He tried to draw his guns, but the enemies were too close. Someone clubbed him with a pistol. Then another blow caught him in the pit of his stomach. He fought back courageously, but he had been weakened. He knew he could hold out for only a matter of seconds. Then he heard a welcome shout from the doorway. Cordray! Hey! It's Cordray and an Indian. Get him! Come on, Tonto! Cordray and Tonto charged at the others with their guns drawn. One man went down. Another went out of the fight with a bullet in the shoulder. The Lone Ranger's strength returned with a mighty surge. He aimed a sledgehammer blow at the nearest chin. I take that! I got this one. That's for Sheriff Bates. Don't shoot! Don't shoot me! Get your hands up! I had nothing to do with Bates' murder. Don't shoot! Stand still, Placer. The law wants you. That goes for you too, Rocky. I got my hands up, Cordray. Well, let me tell you something. You're not the law in Possum Bend. You can't come here and call yourself the sheriff. I'm not calling myself the sheriff. 
I'm acting as a special United States Marshal. That'll do until the mayor appoints me sheriff. Mr. Cordray, I just knew there was something wrong when I saw that other man. Why, he didn't look like the famous Bart Cordray my husband used to talk about. <laughs> I think your husband overrated me, Mrs. Bates. No, he didn't, not by a jugful. You've got all those crooks in the jail, haven't you? Yes. And evidence to hang them. We plan to get them for attempted murder. You see, that masked man offered himself as bait. But the fact is, some of them are trying to save their necks by squealing on the others. We've got several murder charges chalked up, including the murder of your husband. I can just see why you're so famous, Mr. Cordray. Why, my husband didn't overrate you one bit. Well, I can't take the credit for this roundup. I'd have been helpless if it hadn't been for that mass man. You know, it's strange. I trusted him, Mr. Cordray. After he'd talked to me for a few minutes, I trusted him implicitly, without even knowing who he was. You did the right thing, Matilda. He's the Lone Ranger. I'll do it. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendell and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. A part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.